What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are back at it again with digital SAT prep leading up to this current SAT. And we're doing the Khan Academy series just to get you all your critical concepts down. We're in the foundations level into solving quadratic equations. I'm going to do these problems for the first time in real time, and I'm going to explain and teach as I go, which is, in my opinion, is the best way to learn, especially with these foundational principles. So without further ado, let's do it. Here we go. This is solving quadratics. In the given equation, A is a constant. If the equation has the solutions x equals 4 and negative 4, what is the value of A? So the deal here's the dealio, right? If we've got 4 and negative 4, when we've got this factored out like this, all right, x plus 4, or, or sorry, each of these quadratics must equal 0 when we plug in the solutions. Or like, like for example, negative 4, when I plug in here, it's going to be negative 4 plus 4, which is equal to 0. I don't care what this equals because 0 times anything is 0. So that makes sense as a solution. But it also says 4 is a solution. If I plug in 4 here, I don't get anything, right? I get, or I get 8, so I don't get 0. So that means this must turn into zero, meaning two times positive four minus a must equal zero. Eight minus a must equal zero, and then we have our equation, add a to the other side, and eight must a must equal eight, all right? So again, if we were to rewrite this, it's x plus four times two x minus eight, and this makes sense. Because now ne uh, negative 4 zeroes out this one. It says 4 is a solution. 4 now zeroes out this one. 8 is the winner. Done. All right, next. What are the solutions to the given equation? All right, this is a great one because what we're going to do to solve for this is we're going to isolate this square. Okay, this isn't always how we solve a quadratic, but when there's only an x squared term and no x, we just isolate. So x squared equals negative 11 divided by negative 81. That's how we get rid of the eight, negative 81, divide by it. The negatives cancel out. We got 11 over 81. So then we want to isolate x. We want to get rid of that square, the opposite of the square is taking the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, boom, boom, and we got x equals plus or minus, right? When we take a square root like this in an equation, plus or minus square root of 11 over 81. But I can simplify the bottom, okay? When I have a radical like this, I can say x equals plus or minus rad, oops, rad 11 over rad 81. We can kind of separate it out. And rad 81 is 9. So I can say plus or minus 11, rad 11 over 9 like so. So let's see if we have that in the answers. Um, plus or minus 11, rad, yeah, here we go. So positive rad 11 over 9 and negative rad 11 over 9. So that's it. That's how you do it. Done. Number three. Okay, if x equals s and x equals 0, the solution is a given equation. Which of the following is equal to this? All right, so first of all, what are the solutions? They're saying they're s and t, but looking at this quadratic that's already in this nice factored form, we're trying to figure out what values of x zero this out and or zero this out. Well, what minus 4 is equal to 0? 4. What minus 5 is equal to 0? 5, which means that s is 4 and 5 is t in no particular order right or we could say s is 5 and t is 4 or whatever but the bottom line is we're trying to get the absolute value of s minus t so absolute value in this case of 4 minus 5 oops 4 minus 5 it's glitching a little bit sorry guys 4 minus 5 is negative 1 but the absolute value is the positive purifier everything of absolute value comes up positive hence we have 1 c is the winner now you might say well wait a minute what if i said that s was 5 and t was 4, then it'd be 5 minus 4. The beauty of this is we get the same answer. 5 minus 4 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. The college board is not going to give you something where depending on an arbitrary choice, you're going to get a different answer. It's not going to be the case. So if you're unsure about that designation, try both ways, and you'll see that it's going to give you the same answer both times. All right, there we go. And number 4. This times this equals 0. How many distinct real solutions does a given equation have? Okay, so I don't have to... Foil, I don't have to solve, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is say, what's the solution for this, right? It's going to be negative 13 halves because that's what's going to zero out this when it's in factored form. What's going to be the solution for this? Positive 13 halves because 13 halves minus 13 halves is zero. So how many distinct real solutions, meaning I didn't get 13 halves in both, right, or the same in both. I got two distinct unique solutions, a.k.a. C is the winner. Done. That's how you do it. I hope you guys enjoyed that 
that little intro. Aiden wants me to shut up. All right, that's weird. But anyways, I hope you guys, other folks that are watching this, I hope it's valuable and I hope you like the the content. We're going to be streaming every day, usually twice a day, doing this Khan Academy series, uh, going through the up. We're going to keep going through the higher levels, right? Right now we're on foundations. We're going to go up to medium, then advanced, and so on and so forth. This, in my opinion, is the best way to learn. If you do like this video, make sure to click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Last but not least, if you're looking for the best resource to study for the digital SAT, check out the SAT Crash Course. Use the code SCALAR, all caps, for 20% discount. Thank you guys so much for joining Aiden, especially you, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.